Buongiorno, es una joya tener aquí a San Pablo dentro de mura de Roma. Vi salutiamo e vi diamo il benvenuto. Vi chiediamo per favore di avere in mano il boletín bilingüe, inglés e italiano per poter seguire e soprattutto per poter partecipare vivamente in questa Santa Eucaristia. Chi desidera il sermone in italiano lo trovate sul tavolino all'ingresso. Vi invitiamo anche a partecipare alla Santa Comunión recandosi fino qua per ricevere il pane e il vino. Se vuoi una benedizione basta incrociare le braccia, il sacerdote ti darà la Santa Benedizione. Puoi partecipare anche alla comunione con il pane senza glutine, basta alzare la mano. Di nuovo, benvenuti a San Pablo, entro le mura di Roma e buona celebrazione. Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's within the walls to this celebration of the Holy Eucharist. This is a bilingual service in English and Italian. There are copies of the sermon in Italian at the back for anyone that may need them or if you notice someone that looks like they might need one, you can please help them with that. The instructions for communion, which Francisco just gave in Italian, will be given in English at the time of the offertory. So please stand for the first hymn. <laughs>
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Song of Solomon. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands, behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away, for now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The word of the Lord. Say the psalm together responsibly. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me receive what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fingers of man. Because God has blessed. Il tuo trono, Dio, dura per sempre. È scettro giusto lo scettro del tuo regno. Ami la giustizia e l'impietà dei testi. Dio, il tuo Dio, ti ha consacrato con l'olio di Letizia, la preferenza dei tuoi uomini. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes and cassia and the music of strings from ivory palaces makes you glad.
Il Santo Vangelo del nostro Signore Gesù Cristo secondo Marco. Gloria a te, Cristo Signore. Allora, si radunarono vicino a lui i farisei e alcuni scrivi venuti da Gerusalemme. Essi videro che alcuni dei suoi discepoli prendevano il cibo con mani impure, cioè non lavate, poiché i farisei e tutti i giudei non mangiano se non si sono lavate le mani con grande cura, seguendo la tradizione degli antichi. E quando tornarono dalla piazza non mangiano senza essersi lavati. Vi sono molte altre cose che osservano per tradizione, ablusione dei calici, di boccali e di vasi di bronzo. I farisei e gli scrivi gli domandarono perché i tuoi discepoli non seguono la tradizione degli antichi ma prendono cibo con mani impure? E Gesù disse loro Ben profetizzò Isaia di voi, ipocriti, come è scritto Questo popolo mi onra con le labbra ma il loro cuore è lontano da me In vano mi rendono il loro culto insegnando dottrine che sono precetti di uomini avendo tralasciato il comandamento di Dio vi attenete alle tradizioni degli uomini poi chiamata di nuovo la folla se diceva loro ascoltatemi tutti e intendete non c'è nulla fuori dell'uomo che entrando in lui possa contaminarlo. Sono le cose che escono dall'uomo quelle che contaminano l'uomo, perché è dal di dentro, dal cuore degli uomini che escono cattivi pensieri, fornicazioni, furti, omicidi, adulteri, cupidici, malvagità, frode, lasciate sguardo maligno, calunnia, superbia, stoltezza. Tutte queste cose cattive escono dal di dentro e contaminano l'uomo. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not, eat, do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be seated. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. We are out of bread. No, it's not that we don't have any communion wafers, or that the cupboard is bare, or that we are about to go hungry. We are out of bread, meaning that the recent five weeks of gospel readings from John, the Gospel of John's bread discourse are finished. So we're changing themes today. Sometimes our gospel readings are a bit obtuse. And often Jesus turns our traditional thinking on its head. But today, it's pretty clear. Jesus doesn't like all the rules and regulations of the scribes and Pharisees. Their teachings are a problem. To put that in historical context, remember that there were some 613 laws in the Old Testament Hebrew teachings. The book of Leviticus, part of the Jewish Torah, goes on and on, as does Deuteronomy, with many rules and regulations about behavior, worship, dress, food, handling of vessels, the way kitchens are set up, etc. Now to be fair, many of them were very common sense and had a very logical foundation. For example, in those days, not eating pork due to trichinosis, not eating scavenger seafood like lobster and shrimp due to contamination of the water, probably with E. coli and, salma, and salmonella because of less, lack of uh, sanitary facilities, and the kosher separation of meat dishes from dairy dishes. The scribes and the Pharisees were very legalistic. Remember them repeatedly testing Jesus with specifics on the rules? When they handed him the coin and asked him to whom would they, should they pay homage? Or the woman whose husbands kept dying and she married seven brothers and the scribes and Pharisees wanted to know with which brother she would be in heaven? So Jesus calls them to task. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. Are you a rule follower? Are rules for you a guide or a set of absolutes? Most of us fall into one of the two camps. I see some smiles, you know what I'm talking about. As I've lived in Europe a lot of the past decade, I've noticed some trends. In Spain, for example, they don't cross the street against a red light. If the light at a crossing is red, most everybody's going to wait until it turns green to cross the light. In Italy, it seems to be quite a bit more relaxed. The French are very prescribed about their dining hours. Don't expect to wander into a restaurant for lunch at 2.35 or 2.40. The French have lunch from 12 to 2, period. Check the hours before you go. Several years ago, a friend who had lived in Florence, Italy for many years wrote, and I edited and proofread, a cute little book entitled Italian Food Rules. It was a bit tongue-in-cheek, but fun. She outlined Italian ideas of not having cappuccino or any milk in your coffee after midday. You don't eat fish with cheese. Never use a knife with pasta. You get the idea. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Why did your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? It turns out that some of the disciples hadn't washed their hands before eating and were thus ignoring oral traditions, those rules handed down from various teachers. But they weren't really breaking Jewish law. Over time, the rituals, the rules, the regulations had taken on a life of their own and received an undue level of attention. And Jesus is really responding to that. This people honors me with their lips, but not with their hearts. We have our own rules in the Anglican Church. For years, women had to wear a head covering in order to enter the church. And for a very long time, it was felt that if you arrived late to church, after the beginning of the reading of the gospel, you should not partake of Holy Communion. 
Some churches are obsessive about moving the altar missile from one side of the altar to the other when changing from the Old Testament to gospel readings, or very, very fussy about the order of lighting of the candles. And then in America, we have our rules. We aren't supposed to wear white after Labor Day, which is tomorrow. Worldly rules, worldly concerns versus godly concerns. A number of years ago, a nurse at the Catholic hospital where I worked knew that I had recently been ordained as an Episcopal priest and engaged me on Ash Wednesday in a discussion about the Episcopal faith traditions versus her Catholic, Roman Catholic traditions. She quizzed me about our exact Anglican Episcopal rules for fasting during Lent. She wanted to know, could we eat fish, just no meat, or did we have to be totally vegetarian? And for how many hours on how many days? Just Fridays or all of Lent? Was it okay to wipe the ashes off of your forehead on Ash Wednesday, or did you need to leave them on until they just wore off? My reply to her had to do with realigning the heart toward God by practices that are individually meaningful to the person, some that require some type of sacrifice or consideration or intention. It is, I suggested, not about the rules, but about the intentions. I explained to her that our tradition encourages fasting and making confession and other practices, not as a prescribed set of rules, but rather as practices to help put us in touch with our faith, our internal beating, being, and to know God better. I think she was only partly satisfied by the answer. She wanted a firm set of rules that she could quickly follow and keep a tally. That's really much easier. Kind of like the Pharisees, maybe? One of my favorite authors, David Brooks of the New York Times and a bestseller writer of nonfiction, a few years ago wrote a book called The Road to Character. David Brooks talks about our resume virtues versus our eulogy virtues, our internal persona and our external persona. The resume virtues are the ones you bring to the job market and that contribute to external success. The eulogy virtues are the ones that get talked about at your funeral, being kind, brave, honest, or fearful in what kind of relationships you formed, the core of your being. While most of us would say that our eulogy virtues are more important, our conversation, our actions, and social interactions may belie that. In this book, Brooks tells the life stories of a number of significant historical figures and recounts their struggles on their individual roads to character. There are social rights activists, civil rights leaders, political leaders, religious figures, sports heroes, Dorothy Day, Dwight Eisenhower, Augustine of Hippo, Joe Namath, and others. It's a fascinating read and a deep introspection. Quoting Brooks out of the book, he says, quote, most of us, most of us have clearer strategies for how to achieve career success than we do for how to develop a profound character." End quote. Rules or motivation? Brain or heart? Jesus tells us over and over again that the worldly pursuits are what limit us, and he wants us to turn our hearts to God. Their hearts are far from me, he says in our gospel reading today. So what is important? Where are our hearts? We have over 3,000 years of religious rules from the Ten Commandments to the extensive regulations in Deuteronomy and Leviticus to Paul's exhortations in the New Testament. But Jesus really sums it up with what we call the summary of the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. Two things. It's really pretty easy. It's about turning our hearts to God. I've heard it said that prayer is not about praying a set of requests, a number of petitions, a list of give me or I need, but rather prayer is about aligning oneself and one's heart toward God. A very good analogy is being in a rowboat somewhat away from the shore and your oars are gone. 
throwing out an anchor toward the shore, you don't pull the shore to you. You don't pull the shore to you. Rather, you pull yourself toward the shore. Likewise with prayer to God, we are pulling ourselves toward God, aligning our wills to God's. As we pray in the Lord's Prayer, not my will, but thy will be done. That, I suggest, is what Jesus is teaching us in this lesson. He's encouraging us to live into not our resume virtues, but our eulogy virtues. So are rules a set of absolutes or a guide? It doesn't really matter if they help pull us closer to God. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Amen. Please stand for the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fa sì che ogni membro della Chiesa ti serva con sincerità e umiltà. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Preghiamo per tutti quelli che governano e hanno autorità nelle nazioni del mondo. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Abbi compassione di quelli che soffrono per qualsiasi afflizione o difficoltà. In particolare ti prego, Signore, per Rossana, per Vincenzo, per Claudia, per Lorenzo e per Giulia. Give to the departed eternal rest. Ti rivolgiamo alle nostre lodi per i tuoi santi che hanno raggiunto la gioia. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Dio.
Dio Onnipotente, tu conosci i bisogni della tua Chiesa in ogni luogo. Guarda con benignità a noi, popolo di San Paolo entro le mura, e concedici la guida del tuo Santo Spirito, mentre cerchiamo un nuovo sacerdote per questa parrocchia. Donaci discernimento, saggezza e fiducia nei suoi tempi. Preghiamo per la vita della nostra parrocchia, affinché possiamo continuare a essere rafforzati nella nostra missione di testimoniare a Roma una fede cristiana dinamica e vivente, aperta a tutti e senza rifiutare nessuno. Tutto questo ti chiediamo mentre percorriamo le tue vie verso la gloria del tuo nome. We pray together for peace. O oh God, full both heaven and earth, a single peace. Let the design of your great love redeem the waste of our wrath and sorrows. And give peace to your church, peace among the nations, peace in our dwellings, and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another with a sign of peace. Please be seated. Grab my announcements list here. Once again, welcome to St. Paul's Within the Walls. We are very glad to see all of you. We are still in our summer schedule with a slightly abbreviated service this week and next week, but the Latino community comes back today. So we are adding back in the 1230 service in Spanish. And I believe they have a special meal prepared also is that right? Yep. Uh, so it'll be good to see that community back. We return next week. We're again on the shortened, abbreviated service schedule. And then on the 15th of September, two Sundays from today, we have Welcome Back Sunday, where we will have a combined service and a celebration of our ministries, talking about the various things that happen around St. Paul's and what you might do to become involved and pull yourself a little closer toward God. On the 22nd of September, we have a History and Visioning Day where we will talk about the history of the parish and going forward what it might look like when a new priest comes. The office has been closed for the last two weeks but opens back up this week. I think maybe tomorrow, since it's an American holiday, it may not be open tomorrow, but it should be open on Tuesday. 
Um, the choir comes back the 15th? Two weeks. Two weeks of choir will be back. We'll have full music. The organ is under repair. It's still partially usable, but we're having the benefit of the beautiful piano music that's augmenting our services very nicely. And it'll be a while before we get the full organ back, but we have another organ, a Baroque type of organ being uh, put together in the back. So stay tuned, stay tuned, so to speak. And last but not least is my invitation to communion. I would remind you that uh, this is not our table, but God's table. All are welcome and all are called to please come forward at the time of communion. We have gluten-free hosts available if you need that. If there's anyone for whom taking communion up here is difficult, we're very happy to bring it to you at your seats. As you come forward, the bread is offered. You can cross your hands and receive the bread in your palms. Please assist the chalice bear with guiding the chalice to your lips by touching the bottom of the chalice. We ask, that, we prefer that you not intinct because of health concerns, um, but it's perfectly fine in Anglican theology to take communion in only one kind, meaning either the bread or the wine. But we do ask that you, that you do not intinct. Um, and last but not least is, if you don't take communion, feel, please come forward anyway and cross your arms to receive a blessing. We're glad you're here. We have one other announcement from the senior warden. Yes. Oh, oh sorry, 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 sorry. Yep, yep. There, following this service, there is coffee and snacks, and I believe probably a watermelon out in the garden. And then following that, there will be a group that usually goes down the street to the Quirinale Hotel for a bite of lunch. They have a very good deal for us for lunch, and it's a nice time of fellowship. Get to know some of the people here, and get a tasty Italian lunch for a bargain price. So. Um, if you're interested, please join for lunch. Put in Ollie's. Anything else? Yes. Oh, there's prayers. For, uh, sorry, there's prayers for healing at the end of the service. Please come forward if you would like, and there will be an opportunity for prayers for healing at the end of the service. Anything else? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself an offering and sacrifice for God. Maestro. <laughs>
Please stand for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and to death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Lord, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say in our own languages, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Benediciamo il Signore. Rendiamo grazie a Dio. Thanks be to God. Good Sunday.